Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrader.com. Today I have a 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. I'm gonna walk through how to install this Concha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connected. Adding wiring to your vehicle is gonna allow you to pull a trailer and get those light functions from your vehicle to the trailer so that you're legal and safe. Four pole connector is gonna give you both turn signals, your brake lights, and your running lights. It is gonna be adaptable with five, six, and seven pole plugs, which you can find here at eTrailer. What I suggest is if you're putting a hitch on your vehicle and you ever plan on towing, go ahead and add the wiring at the same time. You're going to make it a lot easier. Installing it is going to be very simple, straightforward. It's going to plug in behind each tail light so we don't have to do any splicing and any wires. You're going to have a power wire. It's going to run up to the front of the vehicle and connect to the positive side of the battery and it's going to be fused. The nice thing about the Concha wiring is it's going to have a converter box on it. And what the converter box does is say we're pulling a trailer and the uh, trailer maybe has some older wiring on it. Well, it creates a short. That short can backfeed. The converter box is going to protect the factory wiring on the vehicle from the backfeed from that short so it doesn't affect any of the wiring in the vehicle itself. Nice thing about this converter box is the converter box is filled with a potting material. And the potting material holds all the connections onto the circuit board much better than some of the other types of wiring harnesses out there. So for instance, uh, if we get some vibration, we're on a bumpy road or something like that. A lot of the other ones that don't have the potting material that fills a hole inside of the converter box, those wires can break loose off that circuit board. With our Takancha, we don't have to worry about that because again, that potting material is completely filled inside of that converter box. It's holding those wires onto that circuit board very well. This wiring harness is going to give us 5 amps per circuit for our stop and turn signals, 7.5 amps per circuit for our running lights. This is going to be our four pole mounting bracket. It's going to come with the hardware, the two screws to mount it to the brackets, whether it's the bracket on the draw tight hitch or the long no drill mounting bracket. Our wiring is also going to come with a dust cap so when we're not using it, we can put the dust cap on and it will protect all our connections, keep any dirt and debris from clogging up the holes. Now, this particular wiring harness is designed to live inside the vehicle. However, you notice we have it ran outside. Just because it's designed to live inside the vehicle doesn't mean it has to be inside the vehicle. It will work pulling it outside and installing it in this fashion here. Installing it outside or running it outside is not gonna damage the wiring in any way all the wiring is completely protected. Now I've gone over some of the features, walk you through how to get it installed. Install your installation. We need to come into the rear cargo area. We're gonna remove our floor covering. We're gonna remove our threshold. We're gonna do that by pulling up on it. We're gonna set it aside. We're going to remove this foam pad here. Might be easier if you remove these two little panels, then you're passing your end driver side. And then we need to get this panel pulled out enough where we can get to the wiring that's back here. Before we pull our panel out any farther, if you have the rear seat uh, fold down handles. Right behind it, there's going to be a bolt. We'll take a T30 star bit or torx bit. We'll remove that bolt. You're going to have one of these on each side. On the passenger side, you're going to have a tow hook right up here. You're going to have to remove that bolt as well. It'll be the same, same uh, bit. Take a trim panel tool, with this bottom corner pulled up, we're going to go right in behind it and kind of see about right there where that's being held in. We're going to take this inside, instead of pulling this because it'll crease it, we're going to use our trim panel tool to get to release that. And we're just going to work our way up, we probably have one more right up in here.
you're gonna have a hook here once you get it loose enough you need to reach in and push that carpet over top of it just like that and then we can pop the rest of these out just like that right behind your light there's going to be a large wing nut that's what holds your light in place right below it you just follow the wire is where the plug is on the bottom edge of it there's going to be a little red tab it's a lock tab you need to take something stick it in there and pop that out if you can't get it with your finger this is the red lock tab pull out on it and then you're going to push on that and then it'll release your plug you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle before we go any farther we're going to take our wiring harness we're going to take the bundle of wire that comes in your kit we're going to go ahead and attach the two together you're going to have a short black wire that comes off your converter box that's stripped take one of your buck connectors add it on the end and we'll take one end of our power wire strip it back and we'll add it in the other end next we need to determine where we're going to mount our box and where we're going to ground our wire. I like to try to look for a factory ground uh, if possible. If not, we can always use a self-tapper that comes in the kit and uh, tap it right onto a metal, metal component. Yellow wire is for the driver's side. We're going to attach it to the plug we just disconnected. It's only going to fit one way. And the opposite end on the T will go back into your tail light. So what I'm going to do is take my converter box, mount it right back in this little pocket here. It's going to come with some two-sided sticky tape. My ground wire already has a ring terminal on it. There's a factory ground right here. So I'm going to ground it here, have my box in here, and I can run my four pole and my wiring that's going across down through this little opening right here. You're going to take two-sided tape that comes in your kit, peel off one side, and stick it on the back of your converter box. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove this nut. We'll slide our white wire with the ring terminal on, And then we can reinstall the nut. Peel off the other side of the tape. We can take our converter box. We'll feed it right back in here. I'm going to stick it to a flat surface in there. We're going to take our four pole wire, our black wire, and our green wire. We're going to go down and come out through this bottom hole, as I mentioned earlier. Green wire, we're just going to lay it across because it's going to go over to the passenger side. We need to get our power wire outside the vehicle. Our four pole is actually for this vehicle designed to be inside the vehicle. But that doesn't mean it has to be. Our customer actually wants it routed outside. So what we're going to do is there's a grommet right down here in this bottom corner. We're going to pop that grommet out. We're going to feed our black wire and our four pole wire down through there. And we can slit the, or put a slice in the grommet, slide it back into place, and then we can seal it. Now that we have our four pole and our power wire ran through that hole, we just need to cut our grommet and then stick it back into place. All we really need to do with it just cut a slice in it and we can feed our four pole in and our power wire through it. Stick it back in then we can take some sealant and seal up where we split it. Once you're done with everything on the driver's side you can go ahead and reinstall your panel. Make sure your green wire that's going over the passenger side is routed to the center. You can zip tie to this factory wiring 
that's running up to your spare tire. And then we'll take this over to the passenger side and install it on the back of our taillight, the same way we did our driver's side. Now we need to get our four pole wire over to the center of the vehicle. What I did is I came around the hitch, right up inside here, behind this bracing, fed it over, and it comes out right in this slot here. Now, if you're using a draw tight hitch, it's gonna have a welded on bracket. I suggest getting the uh, four pole bracket that mounts onto it. If not, you're just using uh, the Kurt. You can buy a long bracket. It's a no drill mounting bracket. It will secure with a clamp right onto uh, your hitch cross tube and then pick up the four pole and then connect them together and it'll basically come out looking like this. And what that does, is it gives your four pole a more permanent mounting location instead of it just hanging or using the uh, dust cap to hang it on your safety chain loop. We can take our extra wiring and we can zip tie it right to the cross tube. Or we go back a couple steps, the grommet that we sent it through. Once we cut it, before you put your panels back in place and you put your silicone on it, you can actually take the rest of this wire and feed it back up inside the car. I'm just gonna zip tie it right to the cross tube on the hitch. Now we need to get our power wire up to the front of the vehicle into the engine compartment to the positive side of our battery. Let me get it done real quick and I'll show you how I did it. To run our wire up to the front of the vehicle, we need to make sure we're staying away from anything hot or moving. The best way to do it is to try to find some factory wiring that is attached to the vehicle in some way. Here in the back, you're probably not gonna find much. So what I did is where our exhaust mounts up to the frame rail, I ran it through that bracket, it's open. And I put a little piece of vacuum line, I just split it and wrapped it around there. You can put anything around it because this bolt runs straight up into the frame rail and you don't want this wire rubbing on it. So this just acts as a buffer for the, the wire itself. Went over the top here. Right up here in the top, there's a wire. That center wire right there. You want to make sure you go underneath of that because if you go over the top, what happens is the wire will actually pull all the way over and it'll sit inside your spring. Because that wire is attached on the top of this bracket, that'll keep our wire from pulling all the way over. Straight over the top to right here. This is the bracket that's holding our fuel tank up. All I did was took the wire, zip tied it up here at the top, here at the bottom, and here. And that keeps the wire up tight, up against so it's not hanging down, potentially getting caught on anything that may be kicked up by the tires. This panel runs from here all the way up to the front. 10 millimeter socket, and you're just gonna loosen those, and you'll be able to drop this panel down. And you can see the wire is basically following these hard lines. And we don't need to zip tie this. You can zip tie it if you want. You don't need to, because once we put that panel up, it's gonna protect that wire. There's hard lines come out right up here in the front. And this is where my wire is coming out. Now. This is where it's gonna get tricky because we have to get this wire up to the engine compartment. You have your steering arm that comes out pretty close to where these wires or where this wire needs to run up. But you have these hard lines that also run up there. So what I did is took an airline tube, fed it down, right on the side wall. There's factory wiring that's got some tape to it. So right here, you have some factory wiring that's attached to the side wall or the frame rail. I have the airline tube ran behind it because our steering arm actually sits right here. And if we went in front of it, our wire would be hanging out here and our steering arm actually turns. We don't want it to get caught. So I went behind it there. And then we have to worry about this boot right here. So these hard lines that come up, what I did is I took my airline tube and I went right in between them. That's going to hold that my wire up and off this boot. 
and my airline tube comes down right here. All they did was took my wire, fed it inside, taped it. Now we can go up, we can pull it up, and we know we're going to stay away from everything. Keep in mind, this is just a, to give you an idea of the way I ran it, the way that I found that is best to run it to make sure you're staying away from anything. You don't necessarily have to do it that way. Next, we need to get our wire routed to the positive side of our battery. I came up right here. You can go directly across, but then your wire's kind of hanging there. So what I did is I went behind this brace. I went behind this ground wire around this side of my battery here. That way, if the battery ever has to have work on it, they can disconnect and they can just take this and lay it up to the side. But this will stay tucked down in here. Now what we need to do is we need to cut our wire down to size. I'm going to cut it about here. We're going to strip back the end. The kit's going to come with a buck connector. I'm going to replace it with a heat shrink because it is outside the vehicle and this will help protect the connections from corroding. Once you get that on, you're going to take your fuse holder. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to strip back both ends. One end goes into the buck connector. The other end is going to get the ring terminal. Make sure the fuse is not in. We're going to take our heat source and we're going to shrink up this buck connector. If you don't have a heat gun, you can find them here at E-Trailer. Before when you heat shrink a buck connector, there's going to be a little bit of fluid that comes out the end. We're going to make sure that the bubbles around the wire out but you don't want to get it so close that it actually burns through it. So if you look right on the end, you can see that little bit of liquid that's going to help seal that end as well. So now to give it a little extra protection, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that with some electrical tape. So then we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket, and we're going to loosen this nut. These nuts are not designed to come all the way off. So we're going to loosen it enough Go ahead and take it all the way till it stops. We're going to take a ring terminal. We're going to cut a little opening in it. And we're going to slide it right over top of the bolt like that. And then we can tighten the nut back down. Once you get it connected, you can install the fuse. And then we can test everything out. Now we'll test out our wiring using part number I-26. Right turn, left turn, running lights, brake lights. Once you've tested everything out, you know it's working correctly, you're ready to go. It's gonna do it for a look at and installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness on a 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan.